All right, so we just got done watching uh, Dolice versus Imavob fight night, and it was a very entertaining card. We have a lot to go over, but before we do, uh, make sure you guys leave a like, consider subscribing, and leaving a comment under this video. Let's go ahead and get into the breakdown of the entire card. All right, so to start off the card, we had Gilbert Urbina versus Charles Radke, and that was a very entertaining fight. Radke was pressuring Urbina the entire freaking fight uh off the jump i know i knew that um radke wanted to strike and he wanted to pretty much box urbina and that's exactly how he got that knockout um in the first round with literally 10 seconds to go he was able to secure the win and end the fight in a knockout uh i'm very excited to see where charles uh goes after this fight uh he definitely needs to have another fight sometime before this year ends and after that fight we had to sit around you know stream for 10 to 15 minutes and i was waiting very patiently ladies and gentlemen but unfortunately the kizria versus muradov fight ended in the first 10 seconds of the first round and i know what you guys are thinking whoa did it end in a knockout no it did not end in a knockout well was it a submission no ladies and gentlemen it was not a submission it was an eye poke it's probably the fastest eye poke stoppage i've ever seen in my entire history of watching combat sports literally the first 10 seconds of the first round there's an eye poke uh murdoff goes down he can barely open his eyes and they caught off the fight. I think that this was a very smart decision, uh, given the fact that he was going to be in a significant detriment after that point if the fight were to continue. But after that, of course, we had to wait around for another 10 and 15 minutes to see a breakout performance from Natalia Silva. Natalia Silva is definitely a name that uh, we all need to get familiar with because I do think that the UFC is going to do their part at trying to push her as fast as possible. This woman right here can definitely strike. She is quick. She is fast. She has strong combinations. She is very cheeky with her striking. She does something that I really don't see too much in MMA, and that is a lead kick right to the middle or to the head section. Um, and it's something that I, re I rarely do ever see in MMA. I see this a lot in Muay Thai, and I see this a lot in kickboxing. Um, a fighter out there that you guys are probably familiar if you know what's up with kickboxing. It's a guy by Alizov that does this. If you guys want to watch somebody in Muay Thai who does a, a lead kick like this, it's someone like Lerzilla, where it's not a switch kick. It's not a switch kick. It's literally they pick up their front foot, they pivot, and then they look to attack, which is a very rare, rare choice of striking that I see in MMA. But I just wanted to nerd out about that really quickly. But Natalia Silva is definitely a fighter that's game. She is a fighter that likes to strike. And I think that definitely after this performance, the UFC is definitely going to try to push her. She is already a ranked fighter. So it's only up from here. Uh, she had a birth. Her birthday was today and she celebrated it with getting a dominant victory over Viviani uh, Araujo, which was a very entertaining fight. After that fight, we got to see Randy Brown take on Muslim Shalikov. For those of you guys that don't know, Shalikov is a very dangerous striker. He is a Sanda world champion, and he's one of the few men in the UFC to who have ever successfully knocked out an opponent with a spinning heel kick. Now, Randy Brown did a crazy jab, jab, cross right down the center line to knock down Muslim Shalikov, and that was the end of it. Um, for those of you guys out there that enjoy doing a film study, definitely do a film study on this fight. I would definitely love to watch it. But Randy Brown, very, very good performance against Muslim Shalikov. Very excited to see what fight he takes on next. But I think that the moment definitely belongs to Renato Moicano, who took on Drew Dober tonight and probably, in my opinion, the best or the most entertaining fight of the night. Renato Moicano went in there, got bloodied up uh, against Drew Dober. Drew Dober had a very successful second round. Renato Moicano was able to control him in the first and third rounds and walked out with the victory. But what made this so entertaining was the post-fight interview that uh moicano had with a uh, dc that was hilarious 
he said a whole lot in like two minutes. I'm going to try to go over it as, as, as clearly as possible. So first, Renato Moicano says that his father had a, uh, he's having a son at the age of 62. He says he wants to go ahead and get his, his, his wife pregnant. And then he said he wants to become a U.S. citizen. He wants to be a police officer. He wants to off all the bad people in this world. He doesn't want America to become a third world country. Then he said, oh, um, follow uh, my YouTube channel, which go follow Renato Moicano's uh, YouTube channel is Money Moicano's. And then he dissed MMA guru, calling him a fat pig, which I thought was freaking hilarious. And uh, again, he gave his shout outs to uh, Drew Dober at the end of his speech. But I thought that that was the most hilarious post fight interview we've seen in a long time. Uh, definitely very entertaining whenever Moicano is on the mic. Uh, salute to him, salute to his performance, salute to his post-fight interview. Uh, I want to know what you guys think about Moicano's interview down in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts. And for the main event between Delice versus Imavov, it was a fight that had a whole lot of drama, especially in round four. Um, Imavov, he could have ended the fight in the first round, but for some reason, Herb Dean, he just didn't allow it. He allowed Delice to get punched with over 60 punches to the face. Delice landed seven punches in round one. Imovov landed over 60. Just to, get, uh, just to uh, tell you guys how dominant of a, of a first round Imovov had against Delice. And that was pretty much, you know, how it carried out throughout the fight. Delice wanted to do a whole lot of controlling against Imovov on the cage, which really didn't transition to any... Uh, successful uh, dominant positions for Delice. I was begging Delice to go for some takedowns, but for some reason he just wouldn't. He wouldn't try. Um, in round number four, Delice gets hit with an eye poke, and Imovov and Chris Curtis get into it. They start talking mess to each other, and that also transpired towards the end of the fight. Whenever Imovov was given his uh, post-fight interview, and they uh, chitter-chattered against each other for a little while. But that was a very interesting fight that had a whole lot of drama into it, surprisingly. But Imovov, of course, he walked away with a very dominant performance against Delice. Overall, I think the fight was pretty, it was pretty good. It was pretty uh, entertaining. Unfortunately, we did have that one fight that ended in the first 10 seconds, which I hope that the UFC addresses this situation right because we had a whole lot of eye posts tonight um we need to have a design for the glove that promotes this this usage instead of like oh, oh, having a, a a blatant open palm against our opponents because as you as you guys saw today um we saw a whole lot of eye posts so i think now in 2024 the ufc should definitely try to make some you know decisions on these glove designs right so we don't have another fight that ends in the first 10 seconds because of an eye poke but that's all i have for you guys today um i apologize if these breakdowns aren't super in depth this is right after the main card ended but let me know your thoughts about this entire card down in the comment section below i'm very curious to read what you guys have to say and as always i will see you guys in the next video peace out and have a good one